Wildcats. It is February, and February is Black History Month. Um, this is a time to really focus on some of the great achievements that have been done by Black people for our history, um, but let's not limit it to just a month, okay? However, this is a really good time to start thinking about different authors and characters who are Black, and also thinking about um, people, real life people that have contributed um, in almost every endeavor to our nation and our country and um, our world, right? Whether it is literature, inventions, art, film, music, sports, um, there's lots of people to celebrate. We're gonna do that with looking at some biographies. So personally, I love biographies. I find that it's a really good way to um, learn about other cultures, lifestyles, beliefs, to see what inspires people, to um, see how they've overcome their struggles and maybe take some of that inspiration for my own life. I've got an author who is new to me, um, and I've got two books. So. Oh, there's the lunch bell. Um, these two books, uh, actually there's three in the series, but uh, we're going to start with these two. They're by an illustrator, an author, a filmmaker named Vashti Harrison. And it started with this one. This one is Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History. And um, I love these. So I'm going to read one person from the Bold Women in Black History and one from the Exceptional Men in Black History, which came out in 2019, for the next couple of weeks as we move through February. And maybe they will inspire you to do a little bit more research or digging or find a book about one of these people and learn more about their life. So this project is really interesting, or this book. It actually started from a project, started from a challenge that um, Vashti Harrison did for herself. So I'm going to read the introduction, just a little bit of it. It says, this book grew out of a project I began during Black History Month. It started as a drawing challenge to myself to illustrate one African-American woman from history every day for the month of February and post the finished image to social media with a brief summary of the woman's accomplishments. As I researched and I read amazing stories of women both known and unknown, I was surprised to be moved so deeply. As a Black woman, I have studied the history of my people, but never have I felt this connected to the beauty and passion behind their boldness. Whether they were fighting for their families or for social justice or daring to become an artist or an astronaut, each one of these women broke barriers for those who came after her. So the entire book just has these adorable um, illustrations and then some information to get you started on their life. And so obviously these are not really long um, and you cannot boil down one person's life in a tiny paragraph. And so I really recommend learning more about these people um, over the next couple of months. It would be, I think, really interesting and a fun little challenge for yourself as well. So um, the book is set up by a timeline. So it kind of starts in the 1700s-ish and then goes up to present day. And so what I um, am trying to do in, in this is I will read one person, one woman, and one man, and they're roughly going to be from the same time period. So potentially they, they lived during the same time ish, give or take, right? So the first person that I'm going to start with is uh, Phyllis Wheatley. So it's so interesting. I was cleaning out my cupboard and I found an old college paper that I had written in early 2000 about Phyllis Wheatley. And, um, and then I happened to pick up this book and this is the first woman in here. And so 
I thought that was kind of ironic. So we're going to start with Phyllis Wheatley, uh, born 1753, died 1784, um, give or take. It's, um, it's hard to know some people's birth dates, especially when they were um, slaves, right? Because considered property, which is terrible, terrible to imagine, um, their their birth dates, their real names were often not recorded or not considered of a value. So, all right, Phyllis Wheatley. So there's her picture. Phyllis's literary skills were apparent early on. She published her first story when she was only about 14 years old. For anyone, this would be a major feat, but Phyllis was a slave, so it was truly unique. Her original name, date of birth, and exact birth clay, birthplace are all unknown. When she was only eight years old, she was taken from her home in Africa and sold to a trader, then transported across the Atlantic to Boston, Massachusetts, aboard a ship named the Phyllis. She was then resold to a man named John Wheatley, who purchased her to be a personal servant to his wife. The Wheatleys soon recognized her intelligence and began to nurture it. They taught Phyllis everything from theology to mythology, an education that was rare for a woman and nearly unheard of for a woman of color. With the family's backing, she traveled to England to publish her first book, Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral. She was the first African-American woman poet ever to be published. She corresponded with George Washington and the famous French writer and philosopher Voltaire, who called her a master of English verse. Her work was so powerful that abolitionists used it as an example of the intelligence and promise of Black people. In 1767, she was emancipated. Unfortunately, she struggled financially and lived in poverty for the rest of her life. She received a great deal of praise during her lifetime, but validation from white society was integral to her, to her success, and it never came. She continued writing, but was not able to find a publisher in America. Her natural talent and body of work live on as fundamental contributions to American literature. So again, that's Phyllis Wheatley, circa 1753 to 1784, and she was a poet. Okay, we're going to switch over to uh, Little Legends Exceptional Men in Black History. Again, it's by the same author and illustrator. And we're going to do... Um, uh, oh, oh goodness. Benjamin Banneker, 1731 to 1806. So again, um, similar timeline. It says, although Benjamin attended school for only a few years before working on his father's farm, he loved to read and study. He became so good at math that people came from all around Maryland to test him with questions. They were amazed at how quickly he answered them. He would ask math questions too, writing them as poems. Benjamin wanted to use his abilities to help people. At 15, he created an irrigation system that kept water flowing to his farm's crops. It was so effective that even during the droughts, the Banneker farm flourished. In 1753, he became fascinated with a friend's watch. Watches were rare at the time, and his friend let him borrow it. Benjamin studied the watch and eventually built his own full-size clock, the first built in America. News of Benjamin's clock spread throughout Maryland, and he was approached by George Ellicott, a landowner, landowner and amateur astronomer. The two became friends, and George lent Benjamin some of his astronomy equipment and books. Benjamin became obsessed with the stars, lying down outside all night to observe the skies, then going to sleep after dawn. When people saw him in bed during the day, they thought he was lazy. As his knowledge grew, Benjamin even spotted errors in George's books. 
Around 1791, Benjamin wrote an ephemeris, a chart of the movements of stars and planets. George's cousin, Andrew, read it and asked Benjamin to be his assistant for a very special project, surveying and designing land that would become Washington, D.C., the young nation's new capital. Benjamin agreed, and they set to work. When his project with Andrew was over, Benjamin returned home and worked on an almanac, a book about upcoming natural events. He used his writing to speak out about the injustice of slavery and defend the humanity and intelligence of Black people. Benjamin was an exceptional scientist and inventor who, through quiet observation and diligent work, helped shape American history. So that's Benjamin Banneker, 1731 to 1806. As always, if I mispronounce something, I do apologize. Uh, 